Assalamu alaikum this is Dr Hasna with Hasna's that me back with another video to make your anatomy concepts easy and today we're talking about the ischio anal fossa before i get started i'm an anatomy teacher from pakistan and i welcome you all to my channel anybody that's new i just want you to remember that you're lucky that you've come to the right place i would like you all to welcome our special guest here the ischio anal fossa that itself is going to tell us what it looks like so without further ado let's get started do not forget to subscribe to my channel So what is the ischioanal fossa? I mean everything in anatomy starts by the basic definition and then we go and build concepts all the way to the top. Before we talk about the ischioanal fossa, you should definitely know what the perineum is. It's a diamond shaped structure located below the pelvic diaphragm and if that is not making sense to you, you should definitely go first check out the perineum videos and then you should come here. Your perineum is divided in two parts, anterior urogenital part and the posterior anal region. In the anal region we have the anal canal you can see going right here the anal canal on either side of it is what we call the lunch box not the lunch box actually but the ischio anal fossa luckily by chance i actually have one right here right so this is the perineum you can see it's a diamond shape we are talking about the region that lies with the anal canal this is the anal opening we're talking about the region over here on either side of the anal canal now this either side of the anal canal is empty and it goes like honey please give me something like i want to roll in the body too like i also want to contribute to life on either side of the anal canal there are empty spaces known as the ischio anal fossa so now you know the definition ischio anal fossa is an empty space located on either side of the anal canal that's it that's all you need to know but here's where the difficulty starts have you seen that diagram in your anatomy book which goes like this but i'm going to show you a hack to understand it all right so let's suppose we're viewing the ischioanal fossa from behind this is that space right over here all this space posteriorly it is limited by the sacrotuberous ligament you can see it and then the gluteus maximus is also coming here right and if you've studied my urogenital region videos we all know if this is the anal region then this is the perineal membrane lying in the urogenital region right that makes sense so you have an orientation that posterior to this ischioanal fossa is probably the sacrotuberous ligament and anteriorly is this perineal membrane basically this is how it's kept the ischioanal fossa it is a triangular shaped fossa located on either side of the anal canal and it has very important boundaries which are going to be asked from you in the exam how will you learn the boundaries i just want you to get a little bit of uh, visual knowledge first I want you to remember that laterally we all know here comes your ischial tuberosity just about the ischial tuberosity we know that there was this obturator foramen covered with obturator internus right and then on the top we have this levator ani muscle that was a pelvic diaphragm below it lies your perineum obviously right so basically what happens is i want you to remember that everything in the human body is covered by these sleeve like things like clothes in known as fascia i'm sure you're aware of that so the levator and i inferior to it lies this fascia known as the inferior pelvic fascia superior to it will be the superior pelvic fascia but the, we're talking about the inferior pelvic fascia right now and from here obturator internus comes what covers obturator internus it's the fascia of the obturator internus let's take it down and now let's talk about inferior pelvic fascia when it gets reflected onto the anal canal onto the sides of it what could it become anal fascia of course that was rocket science I would never have gone in there if I didn't have a book. The inferior pelvic fascia basically reflects as the anal fascia right next to the anal canal and we know that uh, on the walls of the anal canal lie your external anal sphincter then internal anal sphincter. There is nothing new over here. You know most of the things. Over here Mr um anal fascia here throws a tantrum goes like I want to go to the lateral. I want to go to the lateral side towards the obturator internus. I mean he looks cool. So what it does it goes towards the lateral side and as it does that it becomes the perianal fascia all right perianal fascia and as it comes close to the lateral wall it is stopped in its tract because of the pudendal canal the pudendal canal goes like i want to give you a happy ending to your love story i want to let you meet the obturator internus i am going to intervene in the middle and there you have it the lateral side it has this canal known as the pudendal canal What is the pudendal canal? It's basically a area covered with fascia all around, and in it lie the contents of internal pudendal artery, pudendal nerve. That's easy, and obviously the internal pudendal vein. Now, since we've uh, enclosed a box over here, let's just fill up the box with fat because your ischioanal fossa is basically composed of lots and lots of fat. And now you can see this was what was this again? The perianal fascia. This was what was it again? It was the inferior pelvic fascia. This was the anal fascia. This was the fascia covering obturator internus. 
all of a sudden out of the blue this whole space over here gets an attack and it goes like i need a roof i don't have a roof over here. i know i have these guys but not they're barely a roof also in this area goes like I want to divide for some reason because everything in anatomy is supposed to be divided, right? So it basically acquires a roof. This roof is acquired by fascia known as the lunate fascia. All right. Now I want you to come to this piece of hard work I've done for you guys and look at the ischioanal fossa once again. Let's talk about the boundaries of the ischioanal fossa with my little lunch box over here. So what are the boundaries? Let's suppose that this is the medial side, this is the lateral side. The apex is formed where the fascia covering obturator internus and the inferior pelvic fascia meet. This right here is the apex of the ischioanal fossa. Then what do we have? The inferior pelvic fascia is going, here is the anal canal. Let's suppose it's going down and over here it becomes the anal fascia. So what is the medial wall of the ischioanal fossa made of? It is made of the anal fascia and then the external anal sphincter and the sphincter and muscular coat of the anal canal whatever comes over here makes sense what about the base the base is basically the skin of the perineum on which we sit because it's full of fat right so the skin of the perineum is the base posteriorly we've talked about it's the sacro tuberous ligament lower border of the gluteus maximus anteriorly this guy is related to what the urogenital areas perineal membrane this membrane right here this piece of paper has so much value those are the boundaries of the anal canal and even if you want to ask me what is lying laterally is the pudendal canal overall if you look at the ischioanal fossa it is divided into multiple areas the first division is due to this perianal fascia into an upper larger space and a lower uh, smaller space the smaller space is known as perianal space Whereas the upper part, this entire area is known as the ischioanal space. Ischioanal space itself is also divided into upper part right here, this hole over here, and then this guy is divided by the fascia, which covers the roof. Remember, it was like, I just want a roof over my head for no reason. This guy right here is the lunate fascia. I hope that makes sense. So lunate fascia is dividing your entire ischioanal space, divided into supratigmental and tegmental space. So overall, this is the ischioanal fossa. And what are its contents? It's basically filled with fat. Now, the difference of fat comes here. In the perianal part, the perianal space consists of these helicities. You can see right here, they're small loculi and tightly arranged. So if there's ever any infection over here, it is going to cause a lot of pain. Whereas, let's go to the upper part. The ischioanal space has fat, which is large loculi, and they are arranged loosely. So if there's any abscess or infection here, it doesn't hurt that much. So this is the pudendal canal. Where is the pudendal canal? When the perianal fascia is going all the way here on the lateral wall of the ischioanal fossa. So if anybody asks you the definition of the pudendal canal, it's basically a canal lying on the lateral wall of the ischioanal fossa. And it is basically composed of the different fascia that are lying here. So you can see laterally is the fascia covering the obturator internus. This guy right here continues down. So fascia covering obturator internus is giving it some fascia and over here perianal fascia is giving it some part some part of it is covered with the lunate fascia that is going on to make the roof of uh, the ischioanal space basically all of these fascia combining to form this facial canal known as pudendal canal containing these two vessels now i want you to remember one more thing in this ischioanal fossa there is this important structure that goes from the pudendal canal and goes woo basically it just goes like let's go on a drive this arching structure is known as the inferior rectal nerve and also with it, along with it, comes the inferior rectal vessels. So obviously, pudendal nerve and internal pudendal artery and the rectal nerve, since they're lying in the pudendal canal, both of them give the inferior rectals. And these are what arch in the ischioanal space and go towards, where can they go? Inferior rectal. So that area over here, it's going to go and supply that. So now, how many contents do we know? The fat, the inferior rectal nerve and vessels. We also know there is a pudendal canal itself making a content of the ischioanal fossa. Apart from that, there are a couple of branches that I want you to remember. So here's the deal. When someone comes at you with a pun, self-esteem goes through a dip. So this is that mnemonic I want you to remember. The pudendal nerve is, the nerve is responsible for giving the dorsal artery of the penis, the inferior rectal nerve we just talked about, and the perineal nerve. And then we have the IPA, which is the internal pudendal artery. It gives the PIA. 
This, these are the same as that. So this is the inferior rectal artery, perineal artery, and the artery of the penis or clitoris. The perineal artery right here gives the branches posterior scrotal and posterior labial vessels. And these form a content of the pudendal canal. All right. So you're not going to talk about the contents of the pudendal canal or the isthmal fossa with all of these branches. You're just going to talk about the posterior scrotal and posterior labial arteries and apart from that the inferior rectal nerve inferior rectal vessels uh, other contents include the perineal branch of the s4 nerve some perforating cutaneous branches so these are all the contents of the isquenal fossa couple of recesses exist in the isquenal fossa one very important recess is one isquenal fossa to the other is connected via this horseshoe shaped recess and the significance of this is if there's any infection here it also travels to the isquenal fossa of the opposite side and then there is an anterior recess deep to the perineal membrane, posteriorly deep to the sacro tuberous ligament, posterior recess. So there are about three recesses. Overall, that was a brief overview of the ischemic fossa. At times, uh, any infection can travel from the anal canal and here it forms all of that abscess and then this infection forms a communication outside in the skin, a, can a canalization occurs. On your skin of the anal region, if there is any pus leaking out through a small tiny hole, it's probably this clinical known as a fistula in ano or the ischio anal fistula. So overall, let's thank our special guest over here, Mr. Lunchbox, that helped us to understand this fanal fossa. If you hope you understood the video, do not forget to like, subscribe, comment, and thank you so much for watching.